Are you thirsty for a thorough review of this Kenwood 4-channel marine-grade amplifier? Stay tuned, here it comes. It's hard to believe it's been seven years since I tested the Kenwood KAC M3004 four-channel mini marine-grade amplifier that really shot me with its power output and its small size. Fast forward seven years and we have a new model, the KAC M5024BT, which is again a four-channel amplifier, but it does have some extra features. We'll find out what those are shortly. Sells currently for $279.99 on Crutchfield. Check a link in the video description if you want to pick one up. Some of you may or may not know that JVC and Kenwood are now one company, and JVC's version of this amplifier is a model number KSDR2104DBT. Whew, that's quite a mouthful. Can you imagine all the marketing people sitting around a table deciding this is the model number? <laughs> so these amplifiers are now popular in UTVs, watercrafts, motorcycles, golf carts, classic cars, all kinds of things like that. And if you break it out into two separate components, the remote can be as much as like 115 bucks for a cheap one. The amp can go for around 300 or you could step up to the full package for around 600 which is a lot more than this amplifier sells for. Now the Kenwood amp has arrived, let's unbox it and find out what's included. First off, the unique piece here, which is a remote control. It does plug into the amplifier with a wire, but this provides Bluetooth connectivity to the amplifier. It also comes with a mounting bracket. You big dummy. This allows for flush mounting of the amplifier, which is very nice. It also has a quarter 20 screw on the back of that remote, which we'll show later that you can use for mounting as well. Here is the amplifier. We'll slide it out. You can notice that the wires are attached, which adds to the length of the amplifier also for installation, but it also allows waterproof capability. And it comes with the owner's manual, which you have to open up, which is kind of like a newspaper. I don't really like that. But here are all the different components that are included. And the box looks really cool. This is obviously designed for retail. You can see all the different features and it gives you the specs, the dimensions and everything. It also is made in Indonesia, we don't see that typically with amplifiers. This marine grade amplifier boasts IP67 and IP66 ratings, which means it is water resistant against powerful jets, as well as it protects against complete temporary water submersion. Things like this panel here with the silicone around it help keep water out, as well as the way the speaker wires and power wires come out of the amp with the silicone there help protecting against water flow. This amp has RCA outputs, which are here on the pigtail. We have speaker level outputs for up to four speaker connections. Also, we have the power and ground that are 10 gauge as well as the remote turn on. Also, the power lead has a 40 amp inline ATC fuse. For any application where the amp may get wet, you definitely want to use waterproof connections. In this case, I'm using this terminal block, which you can use like in a classic car situation where there's not moisture involved. The last wire here in the harness actually goes into several wires into a plug, which extends to the Kenwood remote. Now this is your Bluetooth remote. It does have a quarter 20 screw on the back, so it can be mounted pretty much anywhere a GoPro could be mounted. This works as a pseudo head unit replacement where it has a volume knob as well as the controls for Bluetooth. The button on the left controls play, pause, as well as pairing your Bluetooth device. In the center we have one through seven, which shows your volume level, also shows your EQ mode. Speaking of EQ mode, next button here selects between those one through seven EQ modes, as well as the pre-out control for adjusting the pre-output level. On the bottom we have the track skip, also reverse and fast forward, depending on if you hold those in or just press them once, and we have the volume adjustment and level adjustment for the pre-out. In order to get to the settings of the amplifier, we have to remove this panel off of the front, which again has a silicone surround in order to keep the uh, moisture out. So once you remove this, it tells you what the different features are behind that, but it also has these three screws. Make sure you keep those washers intact as well to help keep it waterproof. 
Here you can see the silicone on the back that kind of protects the amplifier. And uh, yeah, it does a good job sealing it out. Now let's look at the amp itself. You'll see the fader control is on the left. That's for front rear fading. Then we have the crossover frequency adjustment. I really like the way it has the numbers on there, which helps you determine the frequency. Crossover settings at the bottom for channels one, two, three, and four. Also, the output can be either set to two channel or three or four channel. Amplifier is rated 50 watts by four at four ohms, 75 watts by four at two ohms, has seven EQ presets, Bluetooth with built-in AppDex, and a RCA output. Amplifier is small, you can tell here by the size of my hand. As far as dimensions, it's approximately eight inches by four inches by two inches, which is a pretty decent small size, which can fit virtually anywhere. The remote control size depends if you use that flush mounting bracket or not. Overall, it's around two inches by two inches by about three and a half inches for the width. Now for one of the most important features is the Bluetooth connectivity, getting your phone or other Bluetooth device set up. Hold down the pairing button, which is also the play and pause button for about three seconds. Then you should see the device on your Bluetooth device, which here it shows RC-WPAMPBT blah, blah, blah. There we go. All right, I have the amplifier powered off. I'm now going to turn it on. We'll see how long it takes for it to start up. 1,001, 1,002, It's already back up and it should start the track. Next up, we're going to try to connect multiple Bluetooth devices, and then the manual, it says, connect up to five devices. However, it also says you can only do two at a time, which I proved here by trying to connect three at a time, and it would only let me select between the last two that were connected. So you'd have to disconnect one if you want to use more than two at any time. Next up, I wanted to test the low voltage shutoff to find out what voltage the amplifier would shut down. We started around 14.4 worked ourselves down, looks to be around 8.1 to 8.2 volts is where the amplifier will actually shut off. Now let's also check the RCA output voltage and THD of that line level output. And I was pretty impressed here. You're gonna see it's counting up there. We have uh, up to 10 volts there on the left and up to 1% THD. So we measured at 0.3%, we got five volts of output, very nice. Next up, we'll get the amp connected to the amplifier dyno so we can test the true output power. If you haven't seen these tests on the left, RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno will also have the remote indicator so we can calculate the approximate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. First up, we have the amp in the four channel mode. We're gonna try four ohms. We have two channels connected to resistors and two channels connected to the dyno. Let's see what we get here. It's rated 50 watts by four, certified as 1% distortion. And yeah, we get that pretty easily. 59 and 55, but you did notice it jumped at the end. We're not gonna include that. Uh, and I'll talk about that later. I think it's something to do with the amp only being connected via Bluetooth. But uh, anyway, here's uncertified up to clipping. It's rated 50 watts by four. And you can see we got almost 100 watts per channel uncertified to clipping. That's pretty impressive. Let's try the dynamic burst, one kilohertz burst tone going into the amp to check the dynamic capability. And again, we're getting up into the 90s uh, watts per channel, almost double the rated power. That's pretty good. Now, what about the efficiency? We measured pretty high, around 90% at four ohms. That's really good. I mean, the amp has efficient operation. Now, let's try two ohms at four channels, rated 75 watts by four. Here we go, certified test first, a 1% distortion. And what do we get? There you go, 89 and 85 before it jumped up at the end. So again, it beat its rated power. That's nice. Uncertified up to clipping, two ohms. Again, this is a four channel mode, 125 and 121. So almost 50 watts over the rated power. Dynamic, sending the one kilohertz burst tone into the amp. And again, we obliterate the ratings, 116 and 115 right around 14 volts. What about the efficiency at two ohms? It did drop a little bit, but not much. We're still at 84%, really good. Now let's bridge the amp and try it into two channel mode. It's rated 150 watts by two. 
So certify a test first. We're using a one kilohertz track again. And yes, we bypass 150, almost 200 before it jumps up to 250. So we're gonna go about 197 per channel there. We average the two together. Uncertified up to clipping. And yeah, this thing is strong, 260. 262 watts about average there at 14 volts. Very nice. Now dynamic power. As before, we may see a little less than the uncertified test, but still almost 100 watts over the rated power. For something rated this power, that's pretty good. What about the efficiency? Again, 84% at 4 ohms bridged. Here I'm going to show you a graphic of the results in the 4 channel mode, also the bridge mode. And please stick around to the very end of the video after the end credits, and I will show a test around 12 and a half volts. We'll see how much power it puts out at that, because I know a lot of people are saying, we can't give 14 volts with our golf cart. Well, here you go. Just watch all the way to the end of the video and you'll see it. Now we're gonna try a sound demo. Make sure you have good headphones and good speakers. I know this is YouTube, but you can still get a real good impression of how it sounds. Here we go. We have the Mini Kenny hooked up here in three channel mode. And try it with the ELAC bookshelf speakers as well as the Sundown 6.5 inch SA 6.5 subwoofer. So let's start off some smoke jackaboos. Try these different EQ modes here on the song Tune In. So after jamming for a while, the amp is definitely warmed up. Let's check out the external temperature real quick. 119, yeah. You can definitely tell she has been on. She's cooking a little bit. Let's get out the thermal sensor though and see what it looks like. Let's say with the FLIR, we're able to see up to about 124 degrees Fahrenheit. So the amp definitely got warm. Now, since it got so warm, it's a good time to go ahead and test out the capability of it being waterproof. That's right, let's submerge it, see how it works. First off, I tried to submerge it in this smaller container. Couldn't get it in, so I just threw water over it. You know, it said it could withstand splashes and all that stuff. Definitely still working, there was no issue with it. So here we're gonna pour water over it and let you hear it. So I kind of did this in order. I wanted to check the inside after I did the water test to make sure it didn't get any water inside. So let's take the bottom screws off the amplifier. One of the screws, the one on the left, the second one down is actually just a drain plug. So I didn't know that until afterwards, but you can see there on the bottom plate that it doesn't go into anything. So once we open it up, we have to take off some more screws of the circuit board here. There's five different screws so that we can get to the underside and we do have to remove this flat flex ribbon cable as well so we have to flip up the little connector there slide it out so that we can see what's inside the amp here we go 
Circuit boards are conformal coated to keep them from rusting with salt and water and that type of thing. We also have a silicon cover here that keeps water from getting inside the amp. Does a great job. 35 volt 1800 microfarad Rubicons here on the rails and 16 volt 2200 microfarad Rubicons on the power input. And yeah, this thing looks nice overall. Did a good job with it. All right, let's move on to the pros and cons. There's a lot of things I really like about this amp. Let's talk about them. First up, small size, Bluetooth 5.0 controller. It does have aptX and AAC. Replaces the head unit and amp. Has great power output. It is waterproof as shown. It can be submerged. You can connect up to five Bluetooth devices and switch between two. And it has a five volt line level output. All very nice features. Now onto the cons, the volume adjustment jump. What I mean is when you turn between about five and six, it makes a large jump in the volume, which is a problem. Remote cable length is eight feet. That could be an issue if you're using a classic car. Fader for front and rear is on the amp, not the remote. No USB or aux input. The wires are connected to amp, making it more difficult to install. There's no real visual display of the devices connected other than just a blue light that shows that something's connected. The EQ modes seem kind of useless to me. Overall, I really like the amp and the ability to connect Bluetooth devices and have a volume control. I just did not like the way the volume jumped. And my example from 70 watts up to 200 watts with one click of the remote. Also, fading between front and rear needs to be on the remote instead of on the amp, Kenwood. Come on, you can do better. Maybe the next one. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you stick around to the end for the low voltage test. Big D, I'm out of here. We've dropped the voltage here on the Kenwood. We're going to try the bridged four channel mo uh, four ohm mode <laughs> certified. Bridged four ohms certified, one kilohertz. All right, 189 and 202 at 12 and a half volts. For those who want to know about low voltage, there you go. Don't do what I do. Two ohms bridged, one kilohertz. We're just doing a dynamic test just for kicks and giggles. Let's see what we get here. Or hopefully we don't mess up the amp. Dang. Look at that. <laughs> Holy crap, almost 800 watts out of this little teeny tiny amp. I know that's dynamic burst and it's a ridiculous little low load, but that was fun. Kenwood, you surprise me sometimes.